So we have here a uh, rod 0A with a length of 1.5 meters and uh, 30 kilograms of mass. We are being asked to find the angular velocity of that rod at the position shown, right? At 30, at theta equals 30 degrees. They tell us that the spring is unstretched when theta is equal to zero and it starts from rest. So the, we, if we want to draw the initial position, will be something like that, right? Let me. So this will be the initial position. So where this distance is two meters, the total distance is two meters. This is 1.5, therefore this has to be 0 0.5. So this is the initial position and it's at rest. So what do we what equation should we use? Since we are relating forces, in this case the force of gravity, the, the weight and the force in spring, and we are being asked to find velocity, a good approach is to use the principle of work and energy. I will use the principle. And there is several ways to write this principle. The way that I like to write it is the work of non-conservative forces for the position one to two is equal to the total energy in the final position minus the total energy in the initial position. Here we don't have any non-conservative forces, we don't have frictions anywhere, we don't have any other forces applied to the system, so we can say that the non-conservative, uh, the work for non-conservative forces is zero, so we actually have conservation of energy. So we can say that T2 plus V2 is equal to T1 plus V1. And as we say, let's, uh, let's analyze the initial position. They are telling us that the, the position start at rest. So since at position one is rest, we can say that T1 is equal to zero. And what about the potential energy? The potential energy, we can put our datum over here to, to calculate the potential energy of the force, uh, the gravity of weight, and then we can say that it's zero. So our potential energy as you know is equals to the potential energy done by the gravity plus the potential energy done by the spring. Because of our datum, we can say that this is zero, right? This is zero. And actually, it says also that for that position where theta is equals zero, the spring is unstretched. So since it's unstretched, this, this is also equals to zero. So the potential energy is zero. So actually, we have zero energy in the initial position. So those two are zero, so we can say that the, tan uh, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy in the second position have to be zero as well. So let's find out the potential energy in position two, which will be equals as well as the gravity and the spring. The gravity bond. Then we have our second position. This is the se this is the second position, the final position, right? And we have the datum in the same place. So we here need to find this distance right here, h, to be able to know how much is the the how much is the drop in potential energy, and that will be negative mass times gravity times h. And the spring, as you remember, is one half k times delta s squared. So how much is the h that I have dropped? h, you see here, h is the half of the length of my rod times sine of 30, right? That, that will be this length here. So that the energy done time by the gravity will be 
negative the mass, which is 30 kilograms times 9.81 times H, which will be uh, 0 0.75 times sine of 30. How about the potential energy to the spring will be 1 half, K is known and is 80, and how much is the strength position? So we know that the initial position, which is the unstrength position, is 0 0.5. We have to find this final length. Let's call it final L. So that will be LF minus 0 0.5 square. As I, you see here, this is not necessarily, and actually it's not, a 90 degrees, a 90 degree triangle, right triangle. So we have to use, to find that final length, we have to use the cosine law to find, you use cosine law. We know that that final length would, will be so that final length, we have that angle, so we you will use this length and this length, so it will be square root of 2 square plus 1.5 square minus 2 times 2 times 1.5 cosine of 30. And that gives me a length equals to, I have it right here, so it's equals to 1.027. So finally we can say that the V2 is equals 1 half, 80, 1.027 minus 0 0.5 square. And I have those two values right here, this one at the end, V2 is equals to V2G and plus V2S, and this is equals to that value right here, is equals to negative 110.36 joules, and this one here is 11.09, all of that joules. So that's the first value that we will use, so we have that one. Now we have to find the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy in the second position. So we can calculate the kinetic energy in any point. Since O has zero velocity, I like to use that point, and I know that this half, the inertia, mass moment, mass moment of inertia times the velocity of that point, uh, sorry, let me, let me write it completely, and then we can make zero. The, so this is one half mass times velocity of the point square plus one half mass moment of inertia, uh, angular velocity of the bar square. And as I said, this is zero, so we have only the mass moment of inertia, one and a half one mass moment of inertia times angular velocity square. And you remember, that here in the tables we have only the mass moment of inertia respect to the uh, center of gravity, so we have to use the parallel axis theorem. So that will be 112 mass, which is 30, times 1 fifth squared, plus then the mass times the distance, which is 0 0.75 times um, uh, omega square, and if we calculate all that, that gives me 1125 omega 2 square. Well, finally, we have also then those two values, right? So then T2 plus V2 is equal to 0, so I have 11.25 omega 2 square minus 110.36 plus 11.09, that's equal to zero, and that uh, allows me to calculate the value of the angular velocity in the final position, which is 2.97 radians over second. That's the result I was looking for.
using conservation of energy, we were able to, re, to uh, relate the potential energy with the kinetic energy and find the angular velocity.